waiting to go on green. Emotions. This is a nice, cool spring day. Yeah, yeah. One thing about doing gestures is you can find people mirroring themselves. You go to a restaurant, you'll see somebody pick up a glass of water and across from them, they'll pick up the glass of water. You can anticipate those things. And in this case, those two girls are in the exact same pose. Now there's kind of a dynamic there too. It says a little bit about youth and you know, these two girls are over here sitting next to each other and then there's this gap and then there's the two guys. You know, it's, it's almost like they want to be more than friends, but not, there's something going on, or, you know, you could go really dark and say they just went there to get away from everything because they just lost their best friend. You just never know. But what's the story? The reaction is there. This photo right now is gallery. It is the best in show currently up in that display for their 2020 exhibit. This homeless man, I was photographing the light hitting that door. As I walked by, the homeless man came by, dropped his pack full of stuff, sat down, and I realized he had changed, or it looks like he had changed so that he could dress up to go to church, but this church has been closed down. So he sat down and prayed right on the step. No, you can't say it. <laughs> Mark was with me when I took this shot. Um, yeah, the, the one thing I don't like about this shot here is this bright element right there. I wish it wasn't there, um, but I don't remove stuff like that. So looking at this, what did he just read on his cell phone? Anybody think that I'm about to get a nightstick in a very tender area? <laughs> That's not actually what happened. I have a lot of respect for this, you know, um, what this guy did. I used to be a firefighter EMT. I came across this accident scene just as the fire department pulled up. There were two people in a pickup truck that had T-boned another vehicle and they were trapped. He was out there working on them in this, this is not rain, this is ice on his hood. It was pouring ice sleet and he didn't have a coat on, he was soaked. He saw me, I was out there photographing it after a while and, and walked up and the, I'm standing next to the guy that um, was in the car at that moment. He was just kind of looking at us. You see the guy in the background watching the whole thing go down? Human condition. You don't have to have a people or people in your image to tell the human condition. Who here doesn't see a cowboy jumping up and down inside a bouncy house? This is a banker's box. The one on the left is a banker's box. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's Jeff's stuff. Looks like Jeff wanted to be a baker, and that was his dreams. I included the car because I wanted that statement of the banker throwing his dreams to the curb. Bruce Gilden once said, I don't know if he told Russ this or myself or or it was in a conference somewhere. Anyway, Bruce Gilden once said that a good street photo is a photo that you can smell. This homeless woman is out there in the rain. You can see the cigarettes floating in the puddle of whatever. And um, she's trying to keep her belongings dry by putting cardboard over the top and sitting on top so nobody steals it. And by the way, we have a Joppa representative back there. So if you feel like donating, there you go. Human condition can mean a lot of other things. Documenting things before they disappear. Who here has not had any knowledge of a pink toilet? I'm surprised. I thought there would be people here that didn't know about it. Um, yeah, document it before it's gone. A person placed in a lot of negative space can say a lot of things about humanity. If you have a person that is a small figure walking through a courtyard with these monolithic buildings and nobody around, it talks about the fr um, fragility of life, you know, that you could just disappear, you know, you're insignificant. In this case, this could be a metaphor. Is he waiting for the big wave that will never come because there's no big waves there? 
You know, do we all wait in our lives for a big wave that never comes? Color. I'm sure that everybody probably saw that bright color and went, wow, that like that color, you know, or whatever. It stood out. <coughs> Warm colors, vibrant colors come to the foreground. Cool colors go to the background. And in this case, I was using the motion blur to express the movement even more so. And then if you look here, you can see that shine. That's ice. This guy's probably going to end up being in the first image. Vibrant, excitement, youthful lights. A gentleman in his waning years cleaning up after him. He's got the blues. Fourth of July, right? Patriotism, red, white, and blue all the way. Cherry on top is the leg coming out and the leg going out the other way. I did not plan it. I just thought that was so cool. Um, then the other statement is a contrast of <coughs> colors. And you can see they're walking from the warmth into the cold, the blue, purple. Remember how I said that saturated colors stand out, put somebody vibrant behind? This is what happens in downtown Des Moines with the, with the colors in a snowstorm. Only certain colors will pop and vibrate. Everything else desaturates. It's kind of interesting when you start seeing it. Um, if this guy was in the background and the story was in the foreground, you would not really catch the story for a long time. Everybody would be drawn to the bright color. Try shooting at night. Be safe, okay? Just qualify that. Um, uh, try going out at night and shooting at night. Try to um, use compositional elements at night, too. Figure to grounds. This one, won some awards, was on gallery's um, walls as well. This is a numeric play. One person, you see the two plastic bags, there's one back here, one in his hand. Three bike racks, four lights. One, two, three, four. The figure on the right, the image on the right. Who isn't thinking sniper rifle right now, right? It's symbolic, it's symbolism. This is where you need to know your, your equipment and be fast and understand it so that you know that shutter lag so that you can catch it right at the exact moment. Now sure you can go up and you can shoot like a thousand frames per second or whatever um, and then pull out the image. But it's so much more gratifying to take one shot and nail it. The other image on the left, I had to wait and wait and wait until the person turned or a person walked through and I could see their face. It would not be the same with that lighting if I did not see a person's face. And in this case, he turned around to see what was going on on the street behind him. In the upper left windows you see of the second floor, you see that there's like some sort of secret meeting going on. It's kind of interesting. And then it's not very bright, but in that upper right window, do you remember what it is, Mark? Yeah. It's a cat. The cat was sitting up there watching the whole thing go down. Street photography has great areas that cross over into documentary photography and photojournalism. And this image could easily be uh, in the newspaper as a photojournalistic paper or image. They do cross over in many places. Mostly, though, street photography is about the mundane. Reflections. Triangles. Triangle step, triangle step, symbolic. When you start looking at some symbolism, marketing, things like that, these are things that you can play off and start thinking about and going, wow, that does draw your attention and that shows action. Then we have a triangle here. So we got another triangle. So we got three triangles and then another triangle and then we got two triangles here. Then we have a mood, that color. Color theory mood, right here. Reflections can create incredible layers and create credible stories. If you look at the, the multi-dimensional person that's coming out of a portal right here on the left, little Miss Eminem, the cherry on top for her is she's carrying an eight ball. Why is she carrying an eight key, or you know, a, a pool ball that's an eight ball? Now, here's a perfect example of if you don't have a proper figure to ground. Do you guys see the person standing right here? It disappears because there isn't a good figure to ground. Now you have the A ball with two feet coming out of it. 
kind of creates an interesting story. Over here, you have the kid jumping back in the back of the SUV. Did he forget his stuffed animals? Are they like, hey, we're over here? Or is it the other way around? Come back soon. I've had a lot of people contact me, a lot, a lot. I've had a few dozen people contact me on social media and say that my images can sometimes look like Edward Hopper paintings. And that just floors me. <clears throat> I love Edward Hopper, and there's definitely influences there. And for somebody to say that, it just blows my mind. But I specifically shot this, and you were standing next to me again, I think. Um, I specifically shot this because I wanted the reflection here. I wanted this person looking at a reflection of somebody or something else to tell kind of a story. Is he a spy? Is he an undercover cop and there's a drug deal going down? You know, the, the questions that, that come to mind. What is going on? Just like you see in a lot of Edward Humber paintings. This woman's office space is wide open, full of artwork. It's just an amazing space. I work in a cube, so I stuck her in a cube. <laughs> it's only fair, right? No, it's also out of, out of box thinking. You can create your own stories and create your own layers with the reflections. So let's do some storytelling. What's the story? Anybody? Party? Party? Hangover. Hung, hangover? Yeah, exactly. They got the beer cans, the Corona. There's a little tougher one. You guys see? Step out of the way. How bad is this guy that he needs to buy a box full of gift certificates to go to heaven? <laughs> Maybe it's that mushroom shirt. I don't know. That's interesting, isn't it? You don't see stories like that every day. This, this was taken just two months ago, three months, it was December in Miami. What's the story here? Creepy dude. Yeah. <laughs> Think he's pulling a gun? Or is he pulling out tickets because they just won something? Is he a security guard? He's private security and there's somebody coming up behind him and he's like, no way. And he's pulling out his gun. What's going on here? Tell the story up to the last chapter and then don't read the chapter. Let the viewer figure it out. There are thousands and thousands of faces in the city. Every single face has a different story if you catch it. What's the stories here? What do you see? This one strikes me as really interesting, especially with the lumin uh, luminous sort of, or the dark figure moving over behind him. You see that? Every single face that you see can have a different expression that tells a different story. And ultimately, I want you to have fun, okay? Go out there, enjoy it, have fun, if you're not having fun, then it's not for you. That's all good. Okay? In this shot, I saw the kid dancing in the window, and I went, hey, like this, to my camera. And they're like, yeah. And then she goes, look. And she turned around and screamed. <laughs> <laughs> fast, quick. Things happen fast on the street. The cherry on the top for me is not just that. But it's this guy laughing his head off over here, right on the edge. Okay, my name's Alan Jacobs. That's my presentation. If you guys have any questions, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If not, sorry. I couldn't think of anything better.